the prison problem no one's talking about. Staff shortage is so bad, it's now posing a threat to public safety. And tonight, I-Team investigator Adam Walser exposing the crisis and why it could cause a mass release of inmates. Beneath unmanned watchtowers and behind razor wire fences, the nation's third largest prison system is falling apart. Of 18,000 security positions in the Florida Department of Corrections, 5,500 are vacant. The Department of Corrections is in collapse. What is it going to take to get everybody's attention? The problem is when you have a prison crisis, it can lead to terrible, terrible outcomes. The staffing shortage is triggering the closure of prisons, work camps, and work release centers, forcing the state to pack inmates into hellishly hot facilities where some have to sleep on floors. God forbid that we have a riot on any of our, any of our prisons. We're going to have a lot of hurt people, dead people. Florida lawmakers will return to Tallahassee for the 2022 legislative session with a mandate to fix Florida's overcrowded, understaffed, and dangerous prisons. If you think it's something that doesn't affect you and your family, think again. If things get to a critical mass, then the Department of Corrections Secretary has to do a structured emergency release of certain inmates. We are inches away from emergency release in Florida. And you have a lot less control on who you let go That's in that absolute, situation. Absolutely, absolutely. But it is gonna be people who should still be incarcerated that are going to be released early. At a time when restaurant retail and service workers are hard to find, it's nearly impossible to recruit and keep corrections officers. The starting salary for corrections officers is about $34,000 a year, and about 40% of our corrections officers will leave within the first year, 60% will leave within two years. Working conditions are better almost anywhere else. 85% of our facilities are not air conditioned in the state. And while people say, well, that's fine for the inmates, try to recruit a corrections officers to work in an unair conditioned space in the middle of August in Florida. Department of Corrections Deputy Secretary Ricky Dixon recently briefed lawmakers. There's a minimum number of staff that must be present to safely patrol and operate those dorms housing 140 to 250 inmates. He says federal standards require four guards for each dorm with up to 250 inmates. Most Florida prisons, Dixon says, have one officer per dorm per shift. They have no one to back them up. They're alone and they're at the mercy of other inmates, not staff, but other inmates to come to the rescue. This footage was leaked to our script station in Phoenix. It shows guards chased down and beaten by inmates after cell door locks malfunctioned. In Florida, most inmates are in dorm facilities. No bars separate them from officers, officers who often have little experience. We've moved down to, to hiring 18 year olds. Uh, so kids fresh out of high school now. And I just couldn't walk away and forget. Lorette Phillipson is a prison reform advocate who was previously incarcerated at Lowell Correctional Institution. You can tell when an officer is new if they're actually afraid. You can see it in their eyes. And that's a dangerous situation. Yes, it is a very dangerous situation. Phillipson used open records requests to obtain job applications and disciplinary records for officers who worked at Lowell. One guard had a prior criminal history. He had been charged with domestic battery. His charges were dismissed. He also had a breach of peace, which he pled guilty to. That officer resigned and was named in a lawsuit alleging he nearly beat a female inmate to death, leaving her paralyzed. We should be doing a much better job on checking backgrounds. Another officer's disciplinary record showed more than 40 infractions. He had 22 improper conducts. He had 10 excessive uses of force. He had two verbal abuses, and he had seven sexually related complaints. This is a guy who resigned, got a job back there at the same place a year later, was hired on by the people who did these reports. Yes, and not only that, but he was able to move through the ranks of the Department of Corrections from a correctional officer all the way up to a lieutenant. That officer was eventually terminated after he was charged with sexually abusing his stepdaughter. It's the absolute best job I ever had. Florida Department of Corrections is recruiting with flashy online videos. 
You'll be influencing lives while safeguarding our institutions and offering bonuses. We're also offering a $1,000 sign-on bonus. I've been to facilities in the last month where they had 135 vacancies at that facility, and they only had three applicants. Representative Diane Hart says it used to be easier to find recruits in the rural communities where most prisons are located. It's generational. That's all the family has done. So the children become that, and the uncle and cousins, and everybody works in these facilities together. 20-year-old Tristan Weaver was recruited while at Dixie County High School to work at the Cross City Correctional Institution. I didn't want to get work in an environment like that. Your mom works in the prison? Yes, sir. She's been there 17, 18 years now. Do you ever worry about her? All the time. Weaver says he rarely sees his mom these days. She's spending 16 hours a day there, filling in for the people that don't come in or because they're short staffed, they ain't got people to come in. That's happening system wide. According to Deputy Secretary Dixon, the department spent $103 million on overtime this year. Staffing shortages mean education, drug rehab, and training programs are cut, leaving inmates with no new skills when they exit and nothing to do inside. Inmate idleness has contributed to some of the major notorious disturbances throughout our nation over the years. And you couple that idleness with understaffing and fatigue, and you can see why we're so concerned and why this is such a critical issue. People think, oh, these are criminals. They probably deserve to be there. I don't care about these people. Why should they care? A vast majority of people in the prison system are going to get out. These people are going to come live in your neighborhoods. They're going to be in your communities. And they're either going to get out being prepared to reenter society, or they're going to get out as better criminals because that's what they learned while they were incarcerated. I'm I-Team investigator Adam Walser, taking action for you.